Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I see that there are uh, some people. Uh, welcome in this uh, strange uh, and uh, unusual um, uh, open day, uh, but uh, due to the situation, we are happy that, uh, that we can use uh, this, uh, uh, this system. Uh, what is the program today? Uh, I am going to present the, the outline of our uh, Master of Applied Gastronomy Culinary Arts. Um, together uh, with me, uh, there are also uh, Carol Povigna and Naul Buracco that are um, respectively the, the, the coordinator of the Pollenzo Food Lab, that is uh, where mainly um, the, the master uh, happens and, uh, and, and a worker uh, there. So Carol and Noel are with us. Uh, also, that is very useful, their, their presence, because um, uh, you can interact with us or um, asking questions uh, or uh, so switching on the microphone and talking or you can use the chat. Um, so um, pretty much uh, you can interrupt uh, whenever you want. Uh, I suggest you to, to leave us a bit explain uh, what is uh, the uh, course. Um, and so here you can see uh, a nice picture from the, the overview of, uh, of the main uh, uh, building of the Agenzia in Pollenzo. Uh, we are actually our, um, most of the course uh, happen uh, just in front of this building, building in the Pollenzo Food Lab. Uh, that is uh, a structure um, that um, the university own uh, or rent since uh, 2013 and somehow was the, 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 the conclusion of a circle because uh, as you know in Pollenzo this uh, university, um, the only in the world where um, all the subjects about food are, are studied Actually, the, the practice was something missing because we didn't have the place. Uh, it has been in 2012 when the places uh, became available that the university got uh, it. And so from that moment, we have the Polenzo Food Lab. That for us uh, is the place in which uh, the theory and the practice uh, meet uh, and, uh, and interact uh, in, uh, in didactic uh, activities. The Polenzo Food Lab is the place uh, where uh, most of the activity of the master that I'm going to present are happening. Uh, of course, the Polenzo Food Lab is not used only by the student of the master, but also for, uh, even if uh, in, in small amount, let's say in percentage of the hours uh, uh, for uh, the uh, undergrad courses and the, um, the uh, other masters. Uh, what is the Master of Applied Gastronomy Culinary Arts? Well, it's a first level uh, master, so it's a master with uh, of 90 uh, university credits uh, and, uh, and is a master that we design uh, in which uh, um, different disciplines of gastronomic sciences uh, are conjugated with practice because uh, our idea is that uh, especially uh, who will be the cook, uh, uh, a cook in the future, or, or anyway who, who want uh, to learn about uh, uh, cuisine and uh, using cuisine in different uh, extent uh, in their job in the future, um, has to know much more than just uh, uh, what is happening in the pan. Uh, and that's why we want to give also in this course where the practical is quite relevant, but to have quite a broad vision. So several disciplines uh, of uh, what uh, are for us uh, the, the, um, the gastronomic sciences are in. It's been a choice to have them mainly the scientific or the art science uh, uh, ones. So we left out uh, uh, history um, or anthropology, so not because they are not uh, important, but it, it was not possible to fit them all uh, in here. I've seen there were some uh, ends already on. Uh, do you have questions? No? No questions? So shall I go on? Okay. Um, so when we, uh, as you know, we finished, uh, we are actually finishing these days the first edition of this uh, master. So it's quite recent at the moment when uh, we have been designing these courses. Uh, that somehow has been uh, 
the natural evolution of the courses that we offered in the past about uh, the practice of cuisine. The name in the past was uh, the slow art of Italian cuisine, but uh, we wanted uh, to change it uh, also because uh, we wanted to overcome uh, this uh, uh, fact that uh, of uh, Italian cuisine. We want to give uh, um, a, a preparation to our students that is uh, more transversal uh, as, uh, uh, as possible. Um, that is why uh, we came out uh, with a course uh, that is uh, mm, more centered in the process that I'm going to describe more. So at the beginning, there is quite a broad uh, part about the basics, the courses, the, 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 the disciplines that we think is very important to have a vision on to, uh, to, to frame uh, the work uh, in cuisine uh, uh, in the broad way um, of which is the vision in uh, in Pollenzo, but uh, and then most of the course uh, is uh, divided and uh, declinated under the uh, process. Here we see the courses that are in the basics. Uh, there is uh, quite a bit of uh, food chemistry because uh, we think uh, um, that to know what's going on, to know which are the molecules that you have in food, uh, and because of this. Uh, um, 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 there is uh, to know about what is going on. Ja, I've seen the questions. Yes, the, one of the, the, the group uh, of uh, lectures is about the managing in the way that I'm going to describe. If you have questions, please, about uh, what there is or what there is not in the course, uh, please uh, give me 10 minutes that I go through it so uh, you will see uh, what's in there. Um, so, um, the approach we have uh, uh, in cuisine, and just to answer to one thing, all together at the end are about 720 hours uh, in Pollenzo, and about half of them are of practice, and about uh, the other half uh, is uh, uh, of uh, different theoretical um, courses. Uh, our approach in cuisine, uh, just to stay, to stick uh, uh, in cuisine, is not to train people about how to do things. But uh, our uh, system, our approach is uh, to make people to understand what is going on uh, in a gastronomic preparation so that beside learning also and, uh, and to see some of the ways in which you can reach that gastronomic pre pre preparation, you can decide uh, because there is always more, more than one way to get uh, a result. But uh, if you are just trained on how to do, you will just know that how to while uh, if uh, you know why you have to do certain things to get to a certain product uh, that we think is very important. That is why food camps in gastronomic molecules uh, is uh, one of the subjects. Then, of course, uh, to know uh, something about micro microorganisms and food, and not just because now fermentation are a, are a hit, but uh, because uh, bread is a fermented product, uh, cheese is a fermented product, wine, uh, beer and so um, microorganisms are very important in food to transform it in the way that we do want and also to um, to spoil it so to know these uh, two phases of microorganisms is important then also we thought that to insert something about animal and crop production was important because uh, uh, also for meat, and we know that uh, a good thing it will be in the future to use uh, less than we do now, but uh, the problem is more, even more which meat. And so there is something about uh, what we think is a sustainable approach to animal production uh, and, uh, and also um, to give you some uh, information about crop production. Some information about uh, the, the industrial, I mean, uh, big scale uh, crop production, but then also some information uh, about uh, how you can build up your garden because now we know that many um, cooks and many restaurants have their own uh, garden. So uh, this is uh, um, aspects that we touch. Uh, I have started a nice and bringing out the, I cannot see it. Mm, maybe not. So Madame, if you have any video or picture, please send them and I put into practice. Well, um, there are, um, we have the classes then, uh, the, the, of last year, I mean, in Pollenzo itself. Uh, I think you have already seen the presentation of Pollenzo. We do have also uh, a garden. And in the course that we set up uh, here uh, within uh, the Master of Applied Gastronomy and Culinary Arts, uh, uh, we invited some former students uh, 
a group of former students that a couple of years ago they started from scratch uh, a sustainable garden uh, in the Netherlands and so uh, we thought they, they, they were the best people to, to, to teach how you can start a productive garden uh, of course not a, a huge uh, and, and industrial one but uh, uh, that is uh, sustainable and, and also in town they are not far from, uh, from Amsterdam. Then to have a, a broad vision about what is ecology we think is important to have more to be more aware about the interconnection that there are um, uh, between and among uh, the different uh, actors uh, in, uh, in a system. Uh, taste, uh, something about taste science because uh, Taste is one of the reasons why we learn to transform our food, to improve the sensory properties, even if here we have to distinguish between uh, to, um, to what is uh, taste science and sensory uh, science. Taste science is something that I teach because it's my area of research. It's more about our sense of taste. It works and how you can uh, practice what you can do in cuisine to develop certain tastes or other. While sensory evaluation is more about how can you use uh, techniques uh, to evaluate uh, in a, an objective way um, if people would like or not like uh, a certain food. And, and now there are techniques coming out also just for cooks and uh, so not just for the industry. We also thought that to have an idea about psychology and uh, cognitive neurosciences, uh, of course, applied to food. How do we choose uh, the food that we eat? Why we do like certain food and not others? Uh, which is the process through which we learn to like uh, something because, uh, well, we are pretty much all the same when we are babies, but then growing up, uh, we develop different preferences. How this uh, uh, is done in our brain. Then, of course, uh, to have uh, some uh, uh, hints and some information about nutrition and health is not, uh, not an optional anymore. We know that uh, we have a wrong relationship with food, uh, uh, that is why food is one of the cause uh, of uh, um, several diseases uh, our days in different countries. And so um, we will face that aspects both uh, uh, from the theoretical, but then also in practice. So there will be also time uh, to, to see in the kitchen how you can um, do something to improve uh, the healthiness of the food that you prepare. And then, of course, there will be some uh, hours devoted to basic cookie techniques uh, because I didn't say before but that this course uh, uh, is not um, has been a choice uh, for a long time uh, we have been thinking uh, if uh, we wanted to offer this course for people do it, uh, that, that have already skills or not and at the end we can, uh, came out with the conclusion that the course is for both uh, in the in the edition we are just finishing these days we had uh, out of 25 people, we had um, three or four that has uh, several years of experience in cuisine, while uh, the others, uh, some of them have some experience and some didn't have at all. At the end, we think that this uh, diversity among students is actually a value, is not a, a limit. And we can say that uh, the course was structured in the way that people with not, uh, not any basic were able to follow and pay people that has been working for several years as professional didn't get bored. And this I'm very happy to say now that we have finished uh, is something that we know uh, it happened uh, in, uh, uh, in reality. This is uh, uh, all together, these uh, are uh, um, courses in uh, what we call the basics. Uh, and then uh, from, uh, from an, an year we have about um, uh, 190 uh, 100 hours that are uh, uh, between 90 and 100 hours that are in this part. Then from here on, uh, the course is structured in the process. Uh, and now we say, what are the process? Well, is uh, the like uh, I give you the example uh, raw, uh, and it's easier if we go and see which are the process, and then I come back. Scouting and sourcing. How do you? look for the, the food you are then uh, transforming uh, in, uh, in a cuisine. Uh, and then uh, how to treat uh, raw, um, raw food, uh, and then to go on with the uh, other uh, transformation, fermenting, uh, uh, eating, and seasoning. So this is what we call uh, the process. And the structuring the course uh, in this way make us possible, uh, as I was saying before, to overcome the problem or the question, which kind of cuisine is yours? Is not Italian or Chinese uh, 
or uh, Indonesian uh, or African or whatever is uh, more about the process and also in this case I'm very happy to say in the last edition we had uh, 25 people from 13 different countries going from uh, uh, Far East Asia to Thailand to North Europe, South America uh, and, and so North America and, uh, and really uh, we have seen that the structure in this way uh, we were able uh, to, to catch the attention of everybody. Yes, Daria, if you have a question, you can ask. No, it was just an, uh, an end in the air. Okay, the first uh, process uh, group is uh, scouting and sourcing. So that is, uh, um, there is a wall of, of, uh, of, of small spots about... Uh, uh, aspects that we think are important that is uh, um, diff about foraging as you know um, foraging now became very important uh, in, in important cuisines uh, as a, one of the systems to give the sense of place because you know foraging is uh, to be able to go recognize and catch uh, non-cultivated plants that are very important and we will see why they are important uh, uh, we know because they give you special bioactive compounds that also give you a special taste. Um, cuisine gardening, that is what I was saying before, um, we are lucky enough uh, to be close uh, to a, a restaurant in Alba that has a three Michelin star, Il Duomo di Alba, and they have a quite a nice garden. And so we are able to have their garden and coming and, and doing some lectures and we go and visit their garden. How uh, has to be done? A, a garden to be um, uh, relevant and to be used uh, in, a, in a restaurant. And in this direction also goes the experimental gardening. We do have a, a, a garden, as I was saying, in Pollenzo, and the ecology gardening, that is the example I was giving you before, of the um, former students that uh, set it up from scratch in Holland. And then in edible biodiversity, we, we invite uh, um, somebody working uh, um, in, uh, with chefs uh, uh, that uh, made a very specific choice about uh, uh, wanted to be representative of, of a terroir in which they are. Uh, in the past, last year, we had um, a, a person working with uh, um, um, Central in uh, the restaurant in, uh, uh, in Lima and also a chef from uh, Albania uh, where they have a strong connection with the, uh, the, the land in which uh, they are working. In the road that is how to treat raw material, how, 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 co how, um, how you, you have to, to care about uh, raw uh, to, to preserve or to avoid uh, contamination, for example, uh, or uh, which are the cold process, what are cold process? Well, to form a gel, uh, sometimes you don't need the heat to form a foam. So this uh, tra food transformation in which you don't really need uh, uh, to cook uh, and, uh, and so. And then coming about the meat, uh, uh, cold meat maturation, uh, why we have to wait or what happens uh, in a piece of meat uh, from when we sacrifice the animal to when it's ready to be eaten. Uh, how can we uh, do pre prepare the different cuts and the boning? This is also a very important aspect. In most of cuisines uh, today, they just get uh, some cuts, but in this way you also increase uh, the waste. Uh, so to be able to handle uh, wall parts of uh, animals for the big ones, uh, uh, it will uh, make possible you to reduce uh, the uh, waste. And so that I th we think is something important. Then there will be something also about fish and about uh, the, the, the salad. Again, uh, dishes that you don't in need uh, to cook, uh, to use the heat uh, to prepare them. And then uh, something about uh, sauce and uh, raw recipes. Again, again this is about the uh, practice. Then we go to fermentation. As I say, fermentation is very important. So there is, a, in the basic, there is a, the general introduction about microorganisms in food. And then here there is a bit more about uh, the theory of fermentation, what are fermentations. And then there is uh, something about the practice in fermentation, uh, mainly uh, focusing on fermentation in restaurants. Uh, and then also bread, uh, beer and bread will also have uh, a, a focus because they are very important products. Um, but then 
also quite a bit about fermentation in restaurants. Also here, I can say last year, and still in the next edition, even if it's not working on NOMA anymore, uh, we had uh, David Zilber, the author of uh, um, the, the NOMA book of fermentation together with René Rezepi, who stayed a week uh, with, uh, uh, with us. Um, and then I always say something specific about bread and, uh, and about uh, beer. Uh, then heating process. Uh, uh, there are different ways uh, uh, to use heat. Uh, when you cook in the oven or when you boil or when you cook in the microwave, uh, uh, you cook, but uh, the way to transmit the heat is different and due to this will be different the reaction that will happen in your food. Uh, and so it will be different the product that you get. And so hot process, wet heat and dry heat, uh, we'll go through that and then frying. Frying is a special way of cooking that um, um, make possible to reach a very high temperature. You have a quite an, the interaction between your food and and the, the, the fat that you use. And because of this, you get a special uh, consistency and also a special uh, flavor. And so that's why also we touch that. And in different culture, there will uh, always be some food that is fried because uh, if a food is good when it's fried, it will be even better. Um, and so is uh, is important. Seasoning. Uh, seasoning is not necessarily how to season a salad, but uh, seasoning for us is uh, how can we uh, take out the aromatic uh, compounds from, uh, from different sources. It can be food, can be uh, a plant, can be a, a fruit that uh, we can just pick in a certain part of the year or, uh, and so. So infusion and extraction are two different systems. Uh, to, to separate compounds uh, from a complex matrix, and then uh, also a part about uh, the different sauce uh, that uh, that you can uh, that you can make, and then of course uh, uh, making a, 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 a point uh, together with uh, some uh, the neuroscience that we the psychology that we have seen before in neuroscience. Um, what happened when uh, we have a dish in front of us? Uh, uh, which are the points that we have to consider uh, in creating a dish? And this part uh, um, is, is uh, run not only by people that are actually cooks, but also from people who study neuroscience, because there are some studies uh, our days uh, about this. So there will be something about creating a dish, how to build up, a, so how to create a dish, a single dish, and also the name that you give uh, to a dish. But then having different dishes, how you build up a menu. Uh, which are the points that you should consider. And then something about the pairing of uh, food and drinks. Not necessarily is wine, uh, could be beer, could be cocktail, could be tea, uh, but uh, there are also here some uh, principles that we can uh, follow. Preserving. Why is preserving important uh, uh, in a restaurant? Well, uh, again, um, First of all, because uh, now there are chefs uh, that uh, to reduce the waste, uh, they, they do transform uh, in a way they can uh, uh, sell uh, uh, also uh, as a preserve food, not uh, just uh, uh, in the plate uh, of their clients. Um, and or there are chefs uh, that uh, do preserve uh, some food uh, that maybe is available just in one part of the year, uh, and then they use it uh, uh, during the year. And so there is the preservation of the food uh, for the cuisine uh, or the preservation of the food uh, for, to, be, uh, to prepare something to, um, to sell uh, outside. So something about the preservation theory has to be seen. And then smoking is a system to preserve food and also to create a taste. And also very often is used uh, uh, also in, in, in cuisine and not necessarily at industrial level. And then canning and drying is what I was, uh, the, the two points I was touching before. There are cooks that uh, can uh, and dry to use themselves uh, in different times of the year, or um, they, they do it uh, to reduce uh, the waste uh, in general in their cuisine. So we see there will not be a special course about the management of the waste, but uh, for us, uh, sustainability is, uh, is a red line that goes through uh, the, the whole uh, course, this one and in general in Polenzo. 
And then the communication is very important because, uh, well, to cook is a, also a way to communicate. I mean, when you present a dish to your client, uh, you want to communicate something. But to have some skills uh, about how to improve this communication is very important. So in naming and plating, this is what I was saying, how to give a name and how to to um, to set up, how to present. Uh, there are studies already what is the eye of the client going to look before, which are the colors to catch more the attention and so. Describing. And now there are all the cooks uh, that go to the table of the client to describe or anyway people live uh, staying uh, in your dining room uh, and we know that uh, more and more is very relevant uh, the work of describing because more and more who goes to the restaurant will not just go to eat something nice but want to know um, the story that is behind a certain preparation and so the describing is very very important then also how to handle uh, social media and events uh, is very important. Uh, so social media are, are important to communicate with your clients, uh, but also with your colleagues. And uh, now a big difference between the chefs of our days and the chefs of uh, 30, 40 years ago is, is they share. Uh, starting from the top level one to the more simple one, they share a lot uh, uh, with uh, the clients, but also between them and among them. And that's why um, to handle social media is very important and also how can you organize uh, events uh, also uh, using um, this, uh, this uh, new uh, media and so and then to do this uh, we ask uh, the cooperation of uh, people that are professional in this um, and uh, we are very happy. Cookbooks, uh, cookbooks uh, uh, now there are many but um, what, what is the message of a cookbook uh, and also what, um, how are they built it up? Uh, because you may have the possibility to, 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 to propose one and so And also here we are, have a cooperation with uh, professionals working in, uh, in the publishing uh, of, uh, uh, of cookbooks. Uh, I want to underline these two, social media and events and cookbooks, I mean, also, before you get a three Michelin star restaurant, uh, also because we, we most of the people who come uh, in Polenzo is not the, that what they, they have, is the aim they have in life uh, to have a three Michelin star restaurant. But uh, communication is very, very important because we know that uh, chefs now they have a, a huge uh, uh, power in communication. And so to do it in the right way, we think is very, very important. Managing, uh, somebody, Dari, I think, was asking before, is not the classical management uh, in terms of uh, accounting. It's not accounting, but uh, um, we think uh, that uh, even more after this um, pandemic, that one day will be over, um, as you know, due, 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 during the pandemic and due to the pandemic, one of the the, the, the industry that has to change more and still is undergoing a lot of changes is uh, uh, the restaurant system. And so how to manage a restaurant uh, and also how to be able to manage uh, um, what we call a systemic restaurant because more and more a restaurant is not just a spot in, in which uh, some food is bought, uh, transformed and sell. Very often a restaurant have a, have a maybe a farm or a garden produce bread or are people doing that and so this is what we call a systemic restaurant and also um, to be able to uh, develop different interconnection among all the people working there also here we have the cooperation of former students and now have several years of experience of uh, quite a big and a very systemic and sustainable restaurants in, in different countries. How to manage human resources is very important because human resources are very important, is one of the first voice of cost in running a restaurant, but how can we put together and having the people being happy about this? And also this is because we have the cooperation with people that have done this for many years, that learn a lot, especially in this crisis, actually came out that one of the biggest problems was to handle the people in a certain restaurant. So to have skills in this, we think is important. And then managing connection. Uh, again, from uh, 
the talking, uh, the talks with us of some of our former students from the University of Gastronomic Science that are working as chef uh, in different parts of the world came out that to be able to build up uh, connection uh, for restaurants is uh, is extremely uh, important important for their survival, and that's why uh, the managing for us is more this than not just the accounting. Um, because you know, part of the accounting you can solve it uh, just uh, learning how to use uh, nicely an Excel file, um, while these skills uh, are, are a bit more complex. And so we prefer to invest on these aspects, uh, even if uh, you will learn a bit about uh, the, the Excel files also uh, in, in other parts, uh, also about some practice about uh, how to handle recipes, for example, because. Uh, you will learn to, to write recipes in a different way than just 200 grams and this and this and this, but in what we call a parametric uh, uh, way. And then we come to the last, uh, innovating. Uh, I mean, cuisine uh, is one of the best gym of uh, innovation and uh, um, is very important. Uh, and uh, innovation is always uh, uh, relevant and always there. Uh, and so how can you develop uh, a new product uh, and uh, how can you uh, perform uh, culinary research and development? Product development, you can think about a product uh, to, and then go and propose it to somebody or can also be that somebody wants to realize a product and come to you to see what, what you can do. Because again, I always say, uh, this course has not been uh, designed just for people who want to do the classical career in a restaurant, but uh, maybe people that want to work as a consulting. Uh, and so to have this kind of skills uh, uh, is very, very uh, uh, important. So if somebody comes to you with uh, a problem, I want to do this, um, to see how you can uh, try to solve uh, the, uh, the problem. What are the, uh, the suggestion that uh, you may come out. And then commoning, we think this is very, very, very important because uh, is uh, partially because it's the spirit of Polenzo. Uh, we work uh, to, to have a better society and a better world. And in this uh, commoning, uh, we are uh, touching uh, some aspects that we think are important. One is a mass catering. Uh, or um, uh, institutional catering, as uh, the person teaching this part is calling. We're very lucky for this part that uh, we have a cooperation with Daniel Giusti of Brig Aid. Uh, Daniel Giusti has been working several years at Noma, and then he decided to go from the top uh, kind of restaurants to do something for uh, schools' uh, uh, meals. And so he went back in the States where he have a very, very original an innovative project about uh, uh, school uh, um, school uh, uh, meals and school canteens. Also because, you know, it's a completely different way to, to you have to look at because uh, you have little money, um, and you have to prepare many plates. So it's a different way and we think it's a very important approach. Also because we think that uh, somehow you can improve more the society if you prepare food in a in a canteen uh, that uh, not uh, in uh, in a three Michelin star restaurant and so um, this aspect we really think uh, is very important and we have seen uh, that uh, at the end of the of the of the path that we have done with our students they just uh, had the lectures with with uh, Daniel Giusti both Daniel Giusti and our students really enjoy and got a lot uh, from each other uh, in this part and then cuisine and social project you know that uh, um, again, uh, um, starting from a very important restaurant, think about uh, Massimo Bottura and uh, his uh, refectory around the world, to many other uh, systems uh, where uh, cuisine and food is prepared um, for people who don't have uh, food, or uh, often cuisine and some uh, courses of uh, food literacy uh, that are old uh, in uh, cuisine are very important uh, as part of the project to bring back people into the society, people who have been in jail, who had uh, different problems. And so cuisine and social project uh, for us uh, uh, is, uh, is very important. And social cuisine uh, is uh, very similar in that. Gender and cuisine, uh, probably you know that uh, uh, the, the, the cuisine at all level, top level, uh, low level, 
uh, th there has always been a big uh, gap uh, in uh, in the relevance the, uh, given to the different gender. Uh, very often, uh, um, cuisine was not inclusive. Why we want to look at cuisine as an inclusive place, and so. Uh, we uh, we touch uh, these uh, aspects, uh, inviting or uh, people, uh, one person who set up uh, an organization about women in gastronomy that is uh, um, um, the Parabere Forum, or also inviting uh, a chef that uh, decided to have only women in his cuisine, for example, and and so, and then food food list, literacy through cuisine um, uh, is. Uh, something I was describing also before, how can we use uh, cuisine and uh, the food transformation to uh, increase uh, the awareness uh, in, in children, but non, or not only in children, about uh, sustainability, about health, uh, and, uh, and about the relevance of food uh, in, uh, in, for our uh, health uh, and nutrition and so. And then since uh, um, there are also other masters, as you know, uh, going on uh, in, uh, uh, in Polenzo together with this one, uh, there are some hours in which uh, students of different masters uh, have the opportunity to, to share and to do things together. This is something that has been a request from uh, the students, and that's why we uh, inserted it. So uh, this is uh, how the didactic, and then, uh, as you know, very important uh, are the study trips that are an almark because are part of the the way of uh, of teaching in Polenzo are uh, study trips. Um, of course, uh, in the past, uh, study trips uh, they were abroad. Uh, while for 2021, unless the situation really will change uh, due to the um, the vaccine or whatever, um, we plan uh, to have uh, um, two uh, study trips uh, in uh, uh, in Italy. But uh, we think uh, no. I will come to this uh, no. Just a sec. I finish the study trip and then I come to your request. Um, so uh, the study trips, we have uh, two uh, long ones, one of one week and one of about uh, um, 10 days. Uh, or, or anyway, like last time we decided to have uh, one week, one week and three days and, uh, and so. But then there are many, um, many uh, about 10 one day study trip. So if you look in other masters, they have three uh, long uh, study trips. Uh, in this master, we have two study trips uh, of about uh, uh, of about a week, and then we have uh, ten days uh, uh, that are study trips of one day each, and then there is one of two days. I don't know if I've been cl clear, but uh, one thing that I want to underline is that even if uh, um, due to the situation, we cannot, um, we don't want to go too far, uh, but the didactic value of a study trip is still there. Uh, because uh, what is the value of a didactic trip? Is to go to meet uh, um, people working in a certain area, to meet people that are working in the production of the food in that area, and to meet people that are working in the transformation of the food in that area. Usually we ask to chefs that are um, operating in a certain uh, area to help us so uh, to, to build up the trip. And so it's like if we go in, uh, in a certain area uh, with the eyes uh, of, uh, the, uh, of chefs that are living uh, there. And so, um, to, to, so from the didactic standpoint uh, for us, uh, to stay in Italy or to go somewhere else uh, pretty much is the same. Plus, well, also in the past uh, when there was not... Uh, uh, problem with COVID-19, we always had a study trip in Italy because uh, for people coming from abroad could be interesting. Last year, we supposed to have uh, one in Spain that we managed to do and the other was supposed to be Mexico, but then we didn't do it due to the pandemic. Uh, but likely enough, students uh, had the possibility to do the several one day trip. About the question that uh, a person was asking is uh, that if you can apply for a PhD, uh, it really no, in theory no, because uh, uh, to you have to have a, a second uh, level master uh, with at least 120 uh, university credit to, um, to to apply for a PhD. But uh, 
uh, I have to say, and, and this is true for all our masters. I mean, uh, all, all our one-year masters are of 90 credits, so they, they after you are not uh, uh, eligible for a PhD. But I have to say, I know at least uh, two students that uh, did the, the one-year master in Pollenzo, and then in Canada, both of them in Canada, they managed to um, to apply for a, for a PhD. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, is the only country where they manage, uh, um, because otherwise, usually you have to have uh, the 120 uh, university credit master to apply for a PhD. But um, I can, uh, we can put you in contact in case with these people in uh, in Canada. Um, but uh, otherwise, these uh, are the uh, rules. And before to finish and uh, and to be here for your questions, what we can say. Here you see some of the pictures that we took. This is Cavigna. Here, uh, these are some of the students of this uh, of the course uh, that uh, we are just uh, finishing these days. So this should be one of the first uh, days. Uh, then, in case I can leave the word uh, to Carol, uh, when the the set of the knives that the university gives uh, to uh, every students uh, arrived, and so she explained what they are for. And here we see the students with uh, uh, doing some experience, uh, I think, is uh, in, uh, in pizza making and so. And here we see uh, a picture uh, when uh, David Zilber was uh, uh, in Pollenzo, um, I think, making some, uh, uh, some koji and, uh, and so. Uh, before the end, here is the structure of the course. Uh, right now, we, we hope uh, that uh, there will be no more changes, but uh, keep... Uh, uh, to, to get information from uh, our website, uh, um, uh, we're supposed to start on March 3rd to finish the course uh, uh, in uh, April of the following uh, year. So right now we are planning to start the master on the 3rd of April, oh, sorry, on the 3rd of March 2021 to finish up uh, at the end, uh, oh, sorry, in April 2022. Uh, we we think there will be August uh, as a break for vacation, and then still uh, September and October of lectures in Pollenzo, and then from the end of October on, mainly it will be time uh, left to students for uh, the internship because uh, uh, internships in this master especially are very important. In the other masters, uh, some students do, some not, while year is very important uh, as a part uh, of the course. So altogether, the course uh, um, uh, forecasts about uh, a bit more than 700 hours in Polenzo, and as I was saying before, uh, a bit more than half uh, of practice in, uh, in, uh, in the Polenzo uh, Food Lab. Then there are the study trips, I always say two study trips uh, in, uh, in Italy of a week, and then several um, one-day study trips uh, up to about 10 and then the uh, internships. Uh, the last information, the, um, the language uh, of the course is English. Uh, there is uh, the, an attendance request of uh, 70%, and here you see there is an asterisk, because then uh, we have to see in this edition of the course that we are just going to finish, and for, uh, at a certain point, we have to go to do, give some classes online. And of course, for that, uh, the, the, the attendance is different. And uh, so I always say it's a first level master, so it's a 90 uh, uh, university credit. The application deadline was uh, September 30. As you know, uh, you can still apply. And I can tell you that uh, there are still some uh, uh, spots. Uh, probably due to the situation, uh, we had uh, already, we were already full, but then uh, some people uh, since we switched uh, from uh, January to March, uh, decided not to come or for or whatever reason they have. So we still have uh, a few spots because we cannot get more than 25 people due to the physical space uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the Polenzo Food Lab. Uh, so these were the data uh, that we had before. Uh, right now, I always say, if you are interested and you apply, then we can give you information if you are, have been admitted or not. The fees uh, has not been changed from last year. Actually, there was the idea to change it, but then 
due to the situation the, and also the economical situation worldwide has been decided uh, not to change them. There is the availability of one uh, total fee exemption, one uh, scholarship, and, uh, uh, and so people have to uh, apply for this. So as I was saying, at the end, um, we will, uh, uh, you will get, uh, if you have a degree, uh, a undergrad degree, you will get a master's degree of first level. Uh, it may also happen that we have people that do not have a, a, um, a degree, a bachelor before, and uh, just for example, in the 25 people that uh, attended last year, we had just one person that uh, was in this case. And in that case, of course, that per person will not get a master's degree, but just uh, the certificate of attendance to the master. Uh, what is very important is that uh, to get the master, uh, students have to, to take uh, exams. So there are some exams that are um, in uh, usually for the for some of the lectures within uh, each uh, of the process uh, students will see the the program of the exam at the beginning of the course and then also you have uh, um, and I can now apply now for the master before the degree I come to that question uh, quickly um, and then uh, to get the master degree at the end uh, students have to prepare a thesis and discuss it or they can uh, prepare um, uh, just a report about the internship is different, the number of points they get uh, for that. Uh, about the question, uh, yes, uh, um, you can. I mean, uh, if uh, you will get your degree before March, uh, yes, you can apply now. And then uh, uh, in March, if you get your degree after the course, uh, you will get the master degree. Uh, while if you don't get the degree and you come for the course, uh, at the end, you will not get uh, the degree. Uh, I don't know if it's clear. So if you get the degree before March uh, 2021, so before the start of the course, yes, even if you don't have it today, uh, but from now and today. Then uh, how can I ask questions and your opinion to students about their experience and how, about, how does the uni decide where to send the students? Well. About the first one, I think, uh, yes, we can, uh, if you leave us uh, your email, uh, you can write it here, then uh, we can ask our students, they say they are, they will be very uh, open. And actually in the future, we, we, sh we should think to invite, especially now that we have this online presentation to some of the students that just finished. So yes, if you leave us your email here, um, we can, or you send it to me or to Carol Povigna, which email you can find, uh, or now Carol can write uh, them here, uh, then we can put you in contact with, uh, with our students. Uh, and then about the internships. Uh, um, no, it's not that the university that decide. Let's say that uh, the people in the university, especially Carol Povigna and Nawel Buracco, that will be with you almost all the time uh, of your course, during the time we learn to know you, uh, and uh, and so um, starting from your uh, um, desire uh, to do and what you want uh, to learn, they will help you. Uh, we have seen this year, I can tell you, we had uh, students who did uh, the internship uh, with Massimo Bottura, so in a three Michelin star restaurant, and we had people who, who wanted to do the internship uh, in, a, in, a, in a baker, uh, people who want to do the internship in a sort of uh, agritourism, uh, some people that were interested in, uh, so it really depends on the interest of the people. So it's not us who decide, uh, but uh, is according to what are the student uh, willingness uh, and the fact that during the, the, the months before the internship, uh, uh, we get to know the students. Uh, um, so uh, then, of course, the university will help. Uh, so the students say, OK, I would like to go to Massimo Bottura. And we try to use the channels we have um, to, 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 to present the student if a letter is requested uh, or so. Or if people say, I just would like to go to an agritourism, uh, we can uh, align uh, the students uh, in that. Then also depends in which country you want to go. I always say this year we had uh, students who did the uh, internship uh, in US, uh, in Denmark, uh, in Italy, um, in Thailand. Um, 
really, really depends. And uh, I don't think uh, I have uh, um, many other things to see. This is uh, the group we had this year. Um, this is me. Uh, and this is Noel. Uh, Carol was not here the day. Here there is Ben Reed, that is also a person, a former student of the university, um, um, that um, is coming to give uh, uh, some lectures. Um, after the undergrad, uh, he had already an experience as a chef, and then uh, he opened uh, the Edinburgh Food Studio, that was quite an ex experimental kind of restaurant in uh, in uh, Edinburgh, and. Uh, now they have to close, but they have a bakery and uh, and different things. Um, and yes, these are some products from our garden. Let's see. It is okay when we unite and we communicate as student. I don't understand. I don't. Sorry, Ki Kigui. I don't understand your question. It is okay when we unite and we communicate as students i really i don't know what you want to say i mean i we cannot give you the address of our students because we have to ask them if they want but uh, if you want to get uh, in touch with our students, you can send us uh, the contact. We ask our students, and then they can write you. This is, uh, uh, or there is, oh, yes, I am a bit a uh, dinosaur. So Instagram, UNSG, Polenzo Food Lab, and this is about the Polenzo Food Lab. I don't know if the students have an Instagram of uh, the Magcia19. Yeah, I they might... have. So, sorry, Gabriella. I, yes, they, they have, so you can, like, also have a look to to the hashtag magchia so i am going to write it and uh, please feel free to um, to write directly to us uh, uh, in order to also better understand to who you it's better to put you in contact of course uh, all our students are on the social and they are taking care more than half of uh, the, the, the social management uh, of the masters so they, they are in there and you can see what we are doing uh, but of course, if you want a direct contact through email and so on, we need to ask before. So just let us know. I just wanted to add. Yeah, then uh, probably you know that uh, you can get uh, more information or writing directly to Carol Povigny and me. And uh, if you go up uh, here, you can actually see the contacts that she wrote uh, in the in the chat, or you can find also our contacts on the website of the university as when you go in the part uh, about the information of the course. Uh, and then about uh, info for admission and so you should uh, get in contact with uh, the secretaria, the secretary office uh, at uh, unisg.it. Uh, like the question that the student was coming about the visas and these kind of things. I mean, uh, well, you have to see what's going on in your country, first of all. Um, and then uh, uh, you have to talk anyway with, uh, with our colleagues and not with us. At least of that, it is not something that we take care. Do you have other questions? We are here. Otherwise, as I was saying, the, the presentation has been recorded and uh, our colleagues uh, will uh, send the presentation and make available the, the presentation uh, to the people um, who enroll to this day uh, uh, in the next uh, few days. Or I ask you something. Uh, let's see, Barbara, which country are you from? I can see the names. Barbara? Yes, yes? United States. United States, okay. Uh, we have quite a few that, uh, well, three or four that, and then Clara? Italy, yes. 
Um, are you relative of uh, the lasagna, other former student that uh, now is in Copenhagen working? Let's see. And then uh, Kigi said he's from Uganda. Manav, Dingra? Uh, I'm from India. Uh, thank you. And uh, William Santini? Uh, I'm from uh, Italy. From Italy. Okay. Thanks. Just uh, to have uh, some more information about uh, who was uh, in there. Uh, okay. Well, if you have other questions, we are here and uh, we are all yours. Uh, so I can wait a couple of more minutes. And otherwise, if you don't have uh, anything else to ask, um, here are the information and uh, more on the website and keep uh, in touch because as you know we are walking and uh, discovering day by day what's going on hopefully uh, the worst is uh, behind us we really hope that uh, and so i take uh, the occasion to to wish you uh, an unforgettable christmas I, and i always say unforgettable in the sense that i really think that one Christmas in life uh, with COVID-19 is enough and so unforgettable in that sense. It will be strange and different, uh, but uh, all the best and uh, especially for a healthy and peaceful uh, new year. I don't know if uh, my, my colleagues want to say something else. Fine, just, just I, I think that uh, almost everything uh, is in there, of course, but uh, please feel free to write directly to us uh, if you have any kind of uh, question, even uh, strange, we will be able to uh, readdress uh, if it's more related to, to something administrative, but about the content, uh, about uh, the, the uh, life uh, in, in Polenz and so on, we will be super happy to answer. And of course, uh, hope uh, that you will have like a quiet and nice uh, Christmas, even in this strange situation. Ah, to Manav, uh, for example, uh, since I see, we have a former student uh, uh, that uh, from India and he explicitly said that he would have been very happy to share his experience uh, with students from India who want to come to Polenzo. So if you give us, uh, or probably you, we can, uh, we know that we can give you uh, his uh, email. So we will send it through my colleague, uh, Franca Chiarle, that for sure she has uh, your uh, reference i guess because uh, to come to here you have to leave it uh, we can um, give you uh, the email address of uh, of uh, bracket uh, that uh, he explicitly say that he will be very happy to to share his experience uh, uh, of our course with other students uh, that want to come from india so for that I'm, i know already we have the answer thank you that would be awesome yes Thanks. Okay, so if you don't have other questions, I say bye bye and I say again uh, all the best and take care. And I wish you a peaceful and healthy 2021. Hopefully, maybe meeting uh, some of you uh, next uh, spring. Okay? Arrivederci. Hi to everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>mi si è incartato il computer non riesco più a fare niente ah vabbè spengo bye bye devo finire la registrazione ma non mi fa più finirà comunque vero si è
Ah, daría. 